All right. This is going to be EOC review number six. So Tuesday's homework. When you have a binomial, solve for X. Okay. And again, we're just looking at our binomial and these are really just quadratic functions. So we can use the rules that we've learned with solving quadratics to solve these binomials. First, I have 2x squared equals 32. I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides, and I get x squared is equal to 16. Then I want to take the square root of both sides, and I get x is equal to plus or minus 4. In number 2, I have a negative x squared plus 36 equals 0. So now I'm going to add x squared to both sides because I don't want to deal with a negative. And then I get 36 is equal to x squared. So then I'm going to take the square root of both sides and x is equal to plus or minus 6 because the square root of 36 is 6. You can type it in like this. And we get 6. See? 5x squared minus 10 is equal to 70. So now I'm going to add 10 to both sides because I want to isolate my squared term. When I add 10 to both sides, I'm going to get 5x squared is equal to 80. Then I'm going to divide by 5 and divide by 5, well, 80 divided by 5 is equal to 16, so I get x squared is equal to 16. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and so x is equal to plus or minus 4. Then I have in number 4, 2x squared plus 4x is equal to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out my GCF. And looking at these two terms, I've got 2x squared and a positive 4x. So my greatest common factor here is going to be 2x. So if I factor out a 2x, I'm going to be left with x plus 2 is equal to 0 because 2x squared divided by 2x leaves me with x, and 4x divided by 2x leaves me with 2. Well, now I can use this to solve, and so what I would do is I'm going to take my 2x, set that equal to 0, so that means x is equal to 0. Then I'm going to have x plus 2 is equal to 0, so that means x is equal to negative 2. And those are the solutions for x. Okay. When you have a trinomial, solve for x. So now we're, we are factoring. And remember, when we're factoring, the first thing we're going to do is look for a GCF. Our GCF here is 2. When I factor out a 2, I'm going to be left with x squared minus 2x minus 3, and that's equal to 0. So now I need to factor this x squared minus 2x minus 3. So that's going to be x. Let's see, we have my a term and my c term. So my a times c is going to be a negative 3x squared. And my b term is a negative 2x. So if my a times c is this, and this is my b, I need to find the factors that add together to give me negative 2. So I'm going to have a negative 3 and a positive 1. So my factors are going to be x plus 1 and x minus 3 is equal to 0. Then I can have x plus 1 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 1. That's one solution. x minus 3 is equal to 0, 
so x is equal to 3. Okay, I just added 3 to both sides, and I found x was equal to 3. Now let's look at completing the square. So we have to solve this one by completing the square. So when we complete the square, the first thing we want to do is move this constant, this positive 3, over. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I'm going to get 2x squared minus 4x is equal to 6. And then I want to divide by that, that a term. And the reason why I want to divide by that a term is because if I'm completing the square, I cannot have an a term. So luckily, I can divide this all by 2. 2 divided by 2 is going to be, give me 1. Negative 4 divided by 2 will give me a negative 2. And then 6 divided by 2 will give me 3. So I'm going to end up with x squared minus 2x is equal to 3. Now remember, when I'm completing the square, I have to take that b term, which is negative 2. I'm going to divide by 2 and square it. Well, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So now I'm going to have x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 3 plus 1. Because once I found the number that was going to complete my perfect square, which is this, I had to add it to both sides. Okay, so now that I have my perfect square trinomial right here, this is my perfect square. Now I can write that in factored form, which is going to be x minus 1 squared and that's going to equal 4. From this point, I can take the square root of both sides, and I get x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. Then I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and my solutions would be x is equal to 3, or x is equal to a negative 1. Okay. And then in number seven, they want us to use the quadratic formula to solve. Don't give me a whole lot of space to write on here, if you haven't noticed. So we have our standard form function, but it's not in standard form. So the first thing we need to do is move that constant over. So we're going to subtract six from both sides, and we're going to get 2x squared minus 4x minus 6 is equal to 0. Then I have my a, b, and c terms that I can use to plug into my quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. The reason why I just put the highlighted notes there is because I want you to be able to see it when I'm done. So negative b is a negative negative 4. And then I'm going to fill in negative 4 here. And that's going to be squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, multiplied by c, which is negative 6, all divided by 2 times a, which again is 2. So I'm going to end up with a positive 4 plus or minus the square root Negative 4 squared is going to be 16. Negative 4, so we're going to do 4 negative multiplied by 2, 
multiplied by six, negative, and that's equal to 48. That's gonna be divided by four. 16 plus 48 is 64. The square root of 64 is eight. So we're gonna have a positive four plus or minus eight divided by four. So look over here on the calculator with me. We're gonna have four plus eight divided by four and you're gonna get three. So one value is gonna be x is equal to three. Then you're gonna do four minus eight equals, and that's gonna be divided by four, and that's equal to a negative one. X equals negative one. And looking back at that, that does make sense because this solution matches these solutions and this equation is the exact same as this equation. So equation six and seven are the exact same equation, but one they wanted you to solve by completing the square, one they wanted you to solve by quadratic formula. All right, let's look at question number eight. If it will let me scroll today, maybe. There we go, question eight. Sean solved a quadratic equation by factoring. The problem he solved is given. Complete the four blanks shown for one of his for one of his steps in the solution. Okay. So he has the function x squared plus six x minus five. So he's gonna he factored that. So my a times my c term would be negative five x squared. Oops, I put that negative up here. And my B term is a positive 6. So what factors are going to multiply to give me a negative 5, but add together to give me a positive 6? Tricky, tricky, tricky. Look at what I have here. It's not in standard form yet. So the first thing I need to do is subtract 2 from both sides. Once I subtract 2 from both sides, then I have x squared plus 6x minus 7. So now that makes a little bit more sense because I have a negative 7 and I have a positive 6. Well, the factors that are going to give me a negative 7x squared and a positive 6x are going to give me, are going to be 7x and a negative 1x. So I'm going to have x minus 1 and x plus 7. So that means x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 7. Let's look at number 9 here. Hannah solved a quadratic equation by completing the square. The problem she solved is given. Complete the five blanks shown for one of her steps in the solution. All right, so the first thing that Hannah would have had to do was add three to both sides. When you add three to both sides, then you get x squared plus eight x plus a number is going to be equal to two plus a number. Well, that number would be eight divided by two squared. Eight divided by two is four. Square that and you get 16. So she had to add 16 to both sides. Well, her factored form is just 8 divided by 2, which is going to be 4. So it's x plus 4 squared. And then 16 plus 2 is going to equal 18. So x is equal to, well, at this point, then I need to take the square root and take the square root. And then I'm going to have x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 18. 18 can be factored into the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 2. So that's going to be 3 square root of 2. So I'm going to have negative 4 plus or minus 
3 square root 2 as my final answer. If you don't remember how to do some of these things, please come to tutoring so I can answer the questions. I can't explain everything in full detail with these homework reviews because these are supposed to be review. So if you still have questions and you're concerned, please come to tutoring. Anyways, moving on to question 10. Alice was sitting on a dock looking at a lake. She picked up a stone and threw it in the air out toward the lake. It seemed like it was in the air for a long time. The equation that can be used to model the height of the stone in feet as it relates to time in the air in seconds is given by h of t equals 5 plus 50t minus 16t squared. In order to solve for how long the stone was in the air, Alice will need to use the quadratic equation, which is how long was the stone in the air round to the nearest hundredth, if not an exact answer. Okay, so we want to know when that height is equal to zero. So we're going to replace this h of t with zero. So we're going to have zero equals negative 16 t squared. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm putting it in degree order. Okay, plus 50t plus 5. So now I have my A is equal to negative 16, my B is equal to 50, and my C is equal to 5. So I have to plug in all of these values to my function and then solve. So that's going to be negative 50 plus or minus the square root of 50 squared minus 4 multiplied by 16 multiplied by 5 all divided by 2 times a which is negative 16. So let's start simplifying this. So our negative 50 stays the same. We don't have to do anything with our negative 50. So negative 50 plus or minus the square root of 50 squared. So that's going to be 2,500. Minus, well, let's see, we have 4, which is negative, multiplied by 16, multiplied by 5. And that's going to be 320. So we're going to subtract 320 because it's negative. Then that's going to be divided by 2 multiplied by 16, which is negative. So it's going to be divided by a negative 32. Well, 2,500 minus 320 is 2,180. And if I want to find the square root of that, I'm going to get negative 50 plus or minus and I'm going to round this to the nearest hundredth so it's going to be 46.69 divided by negative 32. So now at this point I need to split my two answers so I'm going to have negative 50 plus 46.69 divided by a negative 32. And I'm going to have negative 50 minus 46.69 divided by a negative 32. So 50 negative plus 46.69 is equal to negative 3.31. If I divide that, I'm going to get divide that by a 32 negative and I get 0 0.10. So this is equal to 0 0.10. Then I'm going to do 50 negative, negative, I typed that in wrong, so 50 negative 
minus 46.69. Divide that by 32 negative, and I get three seconds, 3.02 seconds. said it seemed like the rock was in the air for a long time, so I'm going to estimate that her best answer here is going to be x is equal to, or actually t, because they used t for time. The time is equal to 3.02 seconds. I just want to check 2500 minus 320 and the square root of 2180. 2180 square root. I typed that in wrong. 2180 square root 46.69. All right. So I did my math right. I just think the only reason why this point zero point one is because it's too close to zero, and it that rock had to have flown longer than one second if she threw it in the air. So the only valid answer would be the second one, which is three seconds. All right, guys, that's it for review number six. I know that one took a bit longer. I'm sorry. It's just because it's quadratic equations. But bye. Have a good Tuesday.